With regards to epithelial cells and transport across them, there's something interesting to note for transport across these cells. Think of like cells in the lining the digestive system, like the small intestine. Um, so what we see here are the microvilli. These are very good surfaces for transport to happen over. Um, but something special exists in these cells that allows transport to work really well. So between adjacent cells, there's a special connection. It's called a junctional complex. And let me just show you a close-up of this for just a moment. So there are different sorts of connections that can exist between cells. And um, what these do is they prevent diffusion of these carrier proteins that we've been talking about. So the fact that there are fusions between adjacent cells and those fusions go all the way around it would be kind of like in a ring around this cell this means that we can have one type of specialized carrier protein on this half of the cell and totally other types of carrier proteins on this side of the cell there's no way for these carrier proteins to move and end up over here and that's actually very important so it turns out in cells like this that a lot of these different transport mechanisms are all working, but in different places. So what I'd like to do is have you focus on this picture for a little bit, and let's just look at where all these different things are coming into play. So right here, we have our epithelial cell. Down here, we have the bloodstream. Over here would be the lumen of, we're gonna consider the small intestine because it's kind of familiar. So this is where food would be passing through. And what we're gonna overall be considering is the absorption of glucose. So in order for this to happen, in order for us to absorb glucose from our food into uh, our epithelial cells and ultimately into the bloodstream, is a few different things. Okay, so we need to, definitely we need to be able to transport glucose inside of the cell. And we know that that can happen by a co-transport mechanism. Um, but first we've got to consider where does the sodium gradient come from in the first place. So let's actually start down here. Down here on this side, this is where we've got some sodium potassium pumps lined up in this membrane. And what those sodium potassium pumps do, we just learned about this, they're going to pump, 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 pump sodium ions out of the cell and they will pump potassium ions into the cell. They use ATP to do that. Okay, so ATP is used to move these ions against their concentration gradients. All right, so that means that we have a low concentration of sodium inside of this, this cell. Okay, so that then becomes important up here. This co-transport that's gonna take place, this depends on the fact that sodium is at a low concentration in the inside of the cell. It's probably gonna be higher out here in the food that we've just been eating. So that transport mechanism, bringing glucose into the cell, is powered by that sodium concentration difference. Next up, once glucose is brought inside of the cell, that can't be the end. Um, this glucose needs to make its way into the bloodstream and get transported throughout the body for all the other cells to have access to as needed. So next up, how does the glucose leave the epithelial cell? That's gonna take place by facilitated diffusion. This is a very simple diffusion process. Essentially, this is just a little channel that allows glucose to slide on through. So um, that's all that's needed. Uh, glucose is going to become concentrated inside this cell as glucose is brought in, right? So that concentration of glucose will drive glucose to move through this carrier protein um, into the bloodstream. So three different types of transport all have to be working in order for glucose to be brought into the bloodstream during digestion. Just in passing, we're going to mention bulk transport uh, because we're talking about transport and cells. There's another way that cells can move things around um, and this applies particularly if the cell wants to move more than one molecule at a time, then the cell can carry out endocytosis and exocytosis. And this involves the formation of vesicles or the fusion of vesicles with the plasma membrane. So just want to mention this kind of in passing in order to to complete our discussion of transport and cells.